What's up, everybody? Welcome to yet another season of Token Moments. And of course, today I have with me, I don't even know what box to put her in because she absolutely cracks me up. Um, you know, I think maybe the, the camera hides it sometimes, but guys, she's actually six feet. This girl is really tall. <laughs> Kiki! 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 She's in the building. I'm, what's I'm, the real pronunciation? Because Kiki? Of Kiki. Kiki. Okay. Because I, I think it was, it's Auntie Funke that said that uh, Kiki in Jennifer's diary. <laughs> I love people call me that Kiki. And every time mom is like Kiki, Kiki, and my mom, you cannot correct millions of Nigerians, oh, Nigerians. what I mean. It's Kiki. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are Girl, you? Girl, your legs are long. Legs for Mommy. days, legs for days, for Did, days. Was modeling ever a thing you ever considered in your life? No, I didn't. You know, let me be honest with you. If I saw you on a runway, I think you might crack up. Like, you might just start <laughs> laughing in the middle of the runway. So maybe that's a good thing that you didn't probably, you know, do that. But you're built like a model. Yes, I know. Okay, no, long legs, long neck arms. and all of that stuff. But, I mean, it's, it's a good thing because I, I might just be 40 and still look like this. So I'm really hoping that I'm able to, to put that uh, skinny thing. But I suffered it, though, when I was in high school and primary school. Were you bigger oh, than this? Or no, I was uh, maybe the size of this stand. You know, <laughs> what there, was day, call you? there was a day I went to uh, pick up clothes off the line, and there was this very heavy wind, and the wind literally blew me, like it lifted me it, off from the floor. And my mom was up there. She's like, "Oh my God, somebody grab her, grab her, gagas, gagas, lo mo mo ye, lo mo mo ye." Many names: Tingo, Lepa, Bees. You know the way bees are easy, they easily fly around. Yeah. So that's yeah. where they believe that breeze can just easily blow me and all that. Yeah. So you don't believe but, I used to be really uh, tiny. I used to be really skinny. Ah. Actually, I was very small at some point. I was the smallest in my family. They used to call me Iggy Shano because I was tiny. And I think it traumatized me so much that I wanted to add weight so much. Yeah. I was really, really small. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the good thing about it is when we grow older, as you said. I mean, I what I have now is so beautiful. Mm. Because when I see people that, uh, you know, my age mates and all of that stuff, everybody's had kids, they've had it, this and that. But it's too hard, it didn't hard. Mm. And at the end of the day, life is not even that hard. So I bless God. <laughs> Let me to remain like this, please. Thanks. So <laughs> We're definitely going to be cracking up today. So, you know, I was thinking about you the other day and it crossed my mind. I was like, you know what? You know, oftentimes being African and from where we are at, it's very, I mean, we talk about how tough it is being a woman versus that with. And then being a woman, in business, mm -hmm. and when I say in business, regardless of any kind of business, because mm -hmm. it's not just people in the industry, yes. bankers as well, people who go through it, um, it's tough. Very, very. But you make it look really easy. You know, every oh. time I look at you, I'm like, do you have a bad day? I mean, <laughs> you're, all, you're not dancing, there's a skits. It's literally, I've never seen a down kiki. Mm -hmm. Is there anything like, you know, how do you deal with all the pressure? So I think first of one thing that I have going on for me that is amazing is family. Mm. My family is super amazing. My mom, my dad, my siblings, my husband, beautiful family I have. And because I'm also the last child in my family, so I am my older brother is my small daddy, my older sister is my small mommy. So I will literally say I have two mommies and two dads. Mm. So even if I started making small some money for myself, when I'm broke, there's somebody to easily, you know, <laughs> manipulate and just say, mm. please just give me something. So it's just um a a comfortable and a great space mm. that I'm usually at. Mm. Then I think naturally, I'm just a very excited person. Yeah. And it has its own downsides because my mom sometimes reminds me that this person has done something that is not nice to you. Be cautious around this person mm. and we forget. Oof. Yeah. What's so alike? I'm working on it though, bitch. <laughs> I am. These days, I don't believe you forgive and forget these days. I forgive you. Yeah, but I do not forget. I remember. <laughs> so me, I'm just, I'm just very highly free spirited, actually. Yeah. And I, so I remember when I started dating my husband and then when we, we started living together, I you wake lived up together in the morning. before you got married? Yes, because my rent was, was already due. <laughs> but my rent was due in... In I think September. Okay. And we're going to get married in January. Okay. Yeah. I can't buy I can't rent new rent. Mm -hmm. so he had happen. proposed at that point. Oh right? yes, yeah. I don't know. Oh no, I wasn't judging. I was coming from the African point of view. Oh yeah, of course, of wow. course. <laughs> you lived with a man. <laughs> oh yeah. That was not your husband. Oh yeah. Did the church know about that? Mm, I don't think so. Ah, uh, the church <laughs> will find out from this. Well, it's too that late. That's sister Kiki. It's too late. <laughs> and I used to sing in church that time. <laughs> Be now exalted, Lord. Para, pa, pa, pa. But there's nothing they can do about it. And then when you go home at night, you know, you're going to go home. I'll be better than you. 
But really, I, I'm not going to pay another rent. Only June. four months was left now. Yeah. We, are, we, are, we are done introduction in, in June. Mm. So, please, mm. I'm not about to go and pay another rent. I'm do a you think that helped? Take film, like, though. leaving, even if it was for a couple of months, do you think it helped? to Because some people say that, mm. oh, leaving, because, listen, you hear how people are like, didn't you guys know each other? Didn't you guys leave to, like, mm-hmm. you know, leaving with a partner before you guys eventually start doing life together helps sometimes. I wouldn't know because I've never lived with a man before. Mm. Okay, I was married. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's up on it? No, it's a minute. In a minute. Yeah. Prior to that and after that. You know, the thing is, me always say that, see, the prayer is that may we not meet someone that pretends. Mm. See, the way you are such a fantastic host is the way people that pretend are fantastic at it. Mm. So if you are with, a, with someone that is pretentious, you will not know mm. until they are now ready to unveil themselves. And mm. that's it. I mean, we lived together for about four months before we got married, but there was, no, there was nothing to discover. Also because I was working at the time a lot. It was also mm. working a lot. And at the time, it was traveling a lot because that was when it was still selling a lot of deals. It was outside Nigeria for the longest time. So I probably get home like 11 p.m., 12 midnight-ish. I'm out. Then before I even open my eyes, it's gone to the office. I wake, wake up, leave the house, come back. And then also that was the eat of the preparation for the wedding. So there was a lot of... You guys were both busy. Them. You had busy lives. Yes. So I, yeah. I would not even really consider it a good time to find out or learn mm. about him if he was hiding something or whatnot. But mm. fundamentally, she, I don't, don't date someone that do pretend. Because... <laughs> Talking about getting married, that was like one part that scared me the most. Mm. In fact, I prayed about it the most. Mm. That God, I've seen this man and I've desired this man. Don't let him to change. Mm. Should in case of, is having any behavioral pattern that I'm not knowing of now, mm-hmm. let it to lock away. Let we'll me not to see this it right again. Now. Expo- no, don't even respect that because we are very sure that she'll be at that time. <laughs> <laughs> Just help me to make sure he didn't come out <laughs> of his body. <laughs> No. Oh, damn, like imagine actually sharing a show be an invitation card. Like people that it happens to, mm-hmm. like we're not laughing at you guys because I've heard the stories. <laughs> I swear I've heard it. Because I have me, to say, no, but in a very painful situation. So yeah. Like those kind of people that you hear that they called off the wedding, I'm like ha, I'm always like, hey, I think I might relocate. So people will have so the cloth. And then some friends are bad. Do not be asking for their... Please, do we get refund, please? I tell you if they knew that the guy was even a bastard before you married the guy. All of them have said it behind your Maybe back. Maybe they were eh? advising you. They said, no. <laughs> you are advising the one that is in love. How dare you? <laughs> ah! You put your mouth in something that does oh, not concern you. Oh, my God. <laughs> you are literally spilling now your makeup. Kiki is a horrible person. She's laughing at those people. <laughs> because I was, I was victorious. How do, how do you break the news in a way? How do you tell people that uh, it's like, hey, the wedding you pop in... I just, you just, I mean, just like the movie that I have on uh, Netflix right now. You just put it there now. I'm um, so we called up the wedding. Why? Mm, we found out that he has cancer. Everybody, <laughs> everybody will understand. I say, oh, yeah, hey, sorry. And I like, you know if we go on, doctor say that he has mm. just four months left. You mm. know, so your friends they will be to understand. Mm. But they will be to ask. Then after four months, if he didn't die, they <laughs> say, how come? What God cannot do does, does not, not exist. exist. But how come people are not together? <laughs> hey, because no, we have already broken the ties. So, <laughs> that was it. I actually know. It's someone that it happened to on the mm. day of the wedding he literally woke up that morning and was like he felt trapped but that's the best but though. she crossed the line mm. and I was trying to advise her at that point that sweetie getting a divorce <laughs> in Nigeria is hard mm-hmm. it's a tough something mm-hmm. it will take you longer than the length of your marriage <laughs> it's better for you to walk out right now forget mm-hmm. the vendors and but mm-hmm. then you know the whole how do I tell my parents she literally begged this guy Wow. So imagine showing up on your wedding day, walking down the aisle, and you just finished crying. Ooh. Imagine dancing into the reception, and he just finished telling you, why are we living a lie, when you know that you're forcing me to do this Ooh. right. People don't, people don't chop. Oh. She said, I know if he'd laugh, when you they laugh. <laughs> I just sit down and say, shoo. Father <laughs> Lord, don't let the world happen to me. Please, magic. Yeah, because... but, um, but you know, no matter how bad it is, or it might be, it is always the best decision, actually. I think so, too. No matter how I bad. So too. I mean, I have someone very close to me that saw all the red flags, but Ashebi was out, invites out, all has been paid for, vendors have been paid, and all of that stuff. And he still went out with the marriage. And it didn't even last two years. And he crashed. And then... You now have to go back, plug, play, do it all over again. Now he's married again, he has a kid, and he's running. Why did you have to do that in the first place? Mm. So it's, I mean, it's, it's a tough place to be. It's a horrible decision that you have to make, but it is always better. 
when I started creating content and I had a few Yorubas in it, and some people had sent messages, my God, I think you should not speak Yoruba because, you know, people, some people don't understand. And because of that, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay. But then I continue to do me. Mm-hmm. And then I, brands started giving me gigs and then I'll do the ads and send it back. And they say, no, because can you add one or two Yoruba lines in there? Then can you deliver the lines where you speak normally? Yeah. yeah. All of it that said that I should not speak Yoruba now. Where are you? Come outside. <laughs> Come outside. <laughs> no, but then, you know, I like the fact that you delved into also talking about how wholesome your life is from family hmm. and also, you know, marriage. Because I find out that in this part of the world, I'm just going to say, you know what I mean? Because this is my podcast and I can say anything I want. So I don't Go care on. what you guys feel. I feel like sometimes when you read the terms and conditions of marriage mm-hmm. in this climate, in this part of the world, the men get the better end of you. marriage I, um, I feel like women get the shorter end mm-hmm. like even if you look at a space for instance you know you find a girl who bright future when I say bright future top of her game mm. killing it mm. and then she marries and she almost fades yeah and you start wondering whatever happened to this designer or this mm-hmm. makeup artist or this there's so many of them in the creative industry that when you knew them they were on there. Like, and the man, you saw this girl hard working, living mm-hmm. her life. Why did you go and bother the greatness? Do you know ah, what I mean? And then they marry and it's like, you're wondering, is it that the person took away their star? You know, and then when you look at the guys, the flip side, the guys in the industry, the guys, you know, even in workspaces, mm-hmm. it's like marriage opens doors for <laughs> them in ways that I can't explain. Do you understand? You find guys that you knew normally, they were doing all right. Mm-hmm. But then they married... They had kids and it's like the heavens just opened. Mm-hmm. You cannot even deny the growth. You Mm-mm. look at them and you're just like, oh, he bought that house. Oh, you know, he sealed this mm-hmm. contract. Oh, even brands began to pay him more. Yeah. It's like when they go and negotiate, they say, ah, ah, you know, he's doing, don't born, he don't yes, mind. But yes. for the woman, even when you're trying to negotiate, getting paid more, mm-hmm. look at you and think, what do you need money for? Yeah. You need to marry someone that can take care of you. Like, mm-hmm. I don't understand why it is like that. See, let me, let, me, let me bust your brain. I know someone who married someone in the entertainment space and then she started doing less. So I just casually said, oh, or asked rather, why is she doing less, blah, blah, blah. And then he goes, no. In your brand, I says, a minister, only a star. And <laughs> in that moment, I'm like, what does, what does that even mean? Mm. So the way I see it is like, men just wants to be on top. Mm. And that's okay because yeah. I want to be on top. Yeah. Where the problem is, is when you do not want somebody else to be on top. Mm. That's where the problem is. True. That's a nice way to put it. We can both be on top. Yeah. Can both, yeah. I mean, the, the top is a flat surface, isn't it? That can yeah. take as many people as, as possible. Yeah. So you're comfortable to have another friend who is wealthy, but you're not comfortable to have your wife as wealthy. Some why? are secretly jealous of women. Yeah. I think they are. So why? I've had certain situations with people that I'm not even dating, like friends of... of I've stopped being friends with certain guys because mm-hmm. of their mentality. Yes, Ooh, sure, I was at sure. dinner one time and we were talking about that Tyler Perry movie where, what's her name? The lady that looks like from Kakindele. Taraji. Taraji, I, okay. I think they look alike, by the way. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, sure. Taraji, the one where Taraji um, was married to this guy, he didn't have money, the guy had a dream. Oh, then, and yeah. And Taraji yeah. was working three, mm-hmm. four, five jobs mm-hmm. or something. We went to dinner. This guy was asking me out. And his friends came. So it was like a double date. Mm-hmm. Um, I went with him. Two of his other friends came with their partners. And for some reason, one of the women there just talked about how the movie has been annoyed. I said, ah, are we in the same boat? <laughs> when I watched that film for three months, I kid you not, I was looking at men, even my own father. <laughs> I was looking at them as suspects. Sus. <laughs> ah, and yeah, my Lego. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. Because people can argue and say, the man should have, you know, given Taraji the money or he mm. should have married. But... This is a girl that walked three jobs for the guy to yeah. focus on his dream. And then he dead. And then you, you, don't, you don't even call the boat. I think the name of... The, they call the boat her name or something like that. He was supposed to call it her name. You know, yes. call it the name of the person that he married. Mm-hmm. Which shows that it was always the man's dream. Yeah. She just didn't fit into the dream. Yes. So we were at this dinner. And then the lady said, Oh, I don't know about you guys. But have you seen this? I can't remember the name of the film. Yeah, I can't remember. After I watched it, I've been so angry. It's caused many arguments. What do you guys think? I kid you not. I entered my car, blocked the toaster. <laughs> Hmm? <laughs> the friends when they see me in public oh my God. I'm not lying I take it personal because how you think Mm-mm. it comes out in the things you say of course, so when a man is saying that serves that right at the end of the day so what so you think he suffered why did she kick him out of the house he did this he did that yes it's good for her she deserves everything why if it's me I'll never marry her ah <laughs> these are your friends I want me to marry you ah <laughs> yeah I mean the, 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 the friends you keep 
they say a lot. But for me, I just believe that, see, if you're not in the same headspace with me and I'm trying to be friends with you, I'm only stressing myself. So I, I, just, I just do not bother. And then you see, when it comes to marriage as well, I feel like a lot of people are not realistic. Marriage is not what people think it is. Mm. What is it? Please tell us. I know you. Ah. I know you're you're new in the institution. Very new. But I'm just two years and a half years old. <laughs> just, I never I mean, went to primary in, one. Wait, wait, wait. Listen. In this society today, three mm. and a half years is a long time. Eh? People are divorcing in six months, eight months. No, why are you laughing as if it's not? What I'm saying is not the truth. Of course, people don't make it past the year. Mm. Three years. You passed the two year each of hardness now. See, I mean, first fundamentally, I just feel like people need to understand that being married is like your sister or your brother. Mm. Look at it like that, first of all. Which means, my brother is my brother, my sister is my sister, no matter what happens between us, even if we fight and don't talk, it is impossible that we own brother or own sister ourselves. Mm. So that's my own OT about marriage. And I, I'm so grateful that myself and Tunji, we share that same orientation. Yeah. Tunji will tell me that, I'm not saying that we should not fight, but whatever fight we want to fight, know that we'll finish it. Mm. So as you are fighting, be knowing that it has to finish. Then, you know, make some basic rules. So if... You're invested in your partner as a friend or as a guy. There's a way I'll be fighting my friend that there'll be gist. You will have sent the gist. But remember that you're fighting. Mm. And that's because you're not letting that fight break the actual bond, bond that mm. you have. So mm. marriage is not all about, oh my God, he bought me flowers. Oh my God, we're going on a date. We're going on holiday. No. Marriage is that gossiping. If, if, you, if you see the stupid dress that that girl wore today, you guys will laugh. Marriage is not, it's not that deep. Mm. I feel like people people put um, so much pressure on marriage that it breaks. Mm. Do you it, think that, does he, I'm just going to ask you this, mm. do, do, does your husband support, like, do you feel like he's your cheerleader? Is, is that important for you to marry uh, someone who rides for what you do? Because I find that that might be one of the reasons why, in the case of women losing who they, who they are mm -hmm. when they get married, you know, it could be because also maybe who they are married to just feels like, why are you working? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, why are you doing this thing? You know, I I I I treaded this because that's how you say. She, when you tweet something, you say I tweeted something. So you threaded. on thread. She, I treaded. Threaded, yeah. I, okay, think, I think. Well, we stand to be corrected if it's not, and that's that's your business, by the way. <laughs> we said it. So I was like, "What's the most expensive gift you've had, you've ever had to turn down?" Mine was a car, and in the comments, I was like, "Oh my God, you turned down a car!" Oh, blah, blah, blah. There was this guy I was seen, and I just randomly, it was Valentine's a couple of years ago. And he's like, oh, what, what, what do you like? I said, I want Range Rover Evoque. And like three or four days later, this guy brought the Range Rover Evoque to my shop. That time I was still having shop in Okwebi in Ikeja. <sighs> when I saw the car, it was two things. Mm -hmm. If I take that car, it means that I'm marrying that man because mm -hmm. of the type of family that I'm from. Because my father will be wondering, the thing that made you to collect a car from a man, <laughs> you are marrying the man. Now, this is the same man that once said to me, what's my wife doing? If, if we are married, you cannot be here more than past 2 p.m. What are you doing? What are you sewing? How much is the clothes you are sewing? That's what he told me. So you are not thinking beyond what I am doing. As far as you're concerned, you just see me doing something that is taking my time. Mm. You are not seeing it that I am investing my time into that thing. So we are not in the same space. Mm. And for that reason, in fact, you know, he, he thought it was a joke when he, he asked me that. How are you going to turn down the car? Why didn't you just take it and break up with him after? That's well, what well, I would do. Well, 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 <laughs> say my daddy. Well, I'll tell him I'm getting married to him, but before, a week before, I'm going to tell him what you just said. <laughs> daddy wants me to close my shop at 2 p.m. <laughs> oh, at that point, I've driven the evil family. Oh, my God, I'm going to your car. You can go and sell it out. You want. My mother will tell you to go and return the car. <laughs> I'll return it to him at the point where I'm getting married. I'm going to be cruising. I just no, don't believe in being nice to these niggas, girl. Like, I know, I know, do, I know. <laughs> and I'm sorry if you like, I'm not bitter or anything. Listen, Listen, I've been nice to you guys. And I realize that sometimes the nicest girl finishes last. You, uh -uh. you don't think so? <laughs> I don't believe so. <laughs> See, I'm telling you. No, but you know, fun sometimes fundamentally, I yeah. believe that the nicest girl, mm -hmm. men don't like women that are nice. No, I, let, no let's, let, let me I rephrase auntie. that. Shout out, Auntie Watch, Auntie Maso. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> I should be in a Yoruba movie. I want to be a Yoruba movie. I want to be a nice, nice, we'll swag, babe. No, but see, this is what me I believe. Me, I believe that, see, I feel like when you, when you know how to, when you know how to put a, for lack of a better word, when you know how to put a man to a nice use, mm -hmm. then it's more functional. See, men like to, they, they want to be reminded what to do. I agree. We have a child. The baby will go to crutch. My husband knows that the baby, the baby needs to go to crutch. Only we forget and enter the car. And I said, excuse me, sir. Not like it's going to go, ah, I'm going to take baggy. Now, that happened for like 
week one, week two, week three, of me consistently saying, take her to school, take her to school, mm. take her to school. And then that registered and became part of his routine. Maybe because it's easy to talk to. You no, are lucky. But then Some again, other women will tell you that they've done this thing you are saying. And it didn't work. The man will look at them and say, I bring this to the house, I did this to the house, so I you want me to take her to school. And uh, that's why when you two you are in a marriage, you cannot, they cannot be bringing everything to you. Me, for one, I tell women this. How, how will you be leaving the house and you're not paying rent? For me, oh, mm. it does not make sense. Mm. See, let I'm living in this house. We are sharing the rent. On my birthday, fly me to Dubai. Fly me to Barcelona for my birthday. That's beautiful. Buy me um, 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 a Fendi bag. Buy me a Christian, a Christian routine, whatever. Beautiful. Mm. But that I'll be living in that house and not pay rent, it is not possible. So that when one wants to fight, you carry chair, carry television, you carry the roof, I'll carry the floor. When we'll see everything, you call it for. You can't tell me get out of my house. No, that's not to be an adult. You can't tell me get out yeah. of my house. There's mm. no, there's nothing like get out of my house. Mm. We are living together. Mm. And you know, so the concept, because living together is like cohabitating, isn't it? it, 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 it and really you is, have to yeah. be responsible. Imagine taking in a friend and then you have a chef, you have a cleaner, you have um, a dry cleaner, mm. and then your friend is just waking up in the morning, you know, eating, throwing their plates and their clothes everywhere in the house, and you're you cleaning after them, you're paying for everything. If no matter how much you love your friend, a time tiring. will come. Yeah. If, if, if I even, it might not even be financial. You might be having a bad time at, at work. And then you get home and somebody just lying down there and then the AC is on and then Netflix <laughs> is on. And I like, she really, really, really. And I coach you, Chrome Joe. And then it, it, it just gets to that point. So yeah. in marriage, you cannot be, I told me, it, it can't happen that mm. you'll be paying all the rent and I'll mm. be living in this house. And mm. you, in my house, somebody has a chef's bill, somebody has a nanny's bill, somebody has a cleaner's bill, somebody has a dry cleaner's bill. That's how it's and done. And sometimes if I default, he can help me, I can help him. Uh -huh. but, yeah. but you can decide to travel and come back and buy me a gift of $10,000. Beautiful. Mm. But that because you have the money, I will not allow you to take... Because see, there's respect mm. in doing you know? mm. There's a lot of respect mm. in this. And that's another challenge in my... A lot of girls, see, every single girl likes to be taken care of. True. The most hardest test work out of them or EG mm. talks. Everybody likes to be taken care of. By the end of the day, I, 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 <laughs> I mean, I admire, I admire just hearing you say that I really admire you because I've learned something also from that. Mm. I'm not the kind of person that will share it. So. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I can't. Too. I'm being honest. But yeah, I, I mean, you, that's beautiful. But let but... me tell you what I, what I am. Mm. I'm the kind of woman who a man would never have to worry about where his next meal is coming from. Yeah. I don't believe in collecting money mm. for housekeeping. I don't believe in it. I don't. Mm. I've had friends who've looked me in the face and thought, that's a stupid way of thinking. Mm. I don't believe in, we are fair, you know, I don't, I'm not that kind of a person. Like, mm. I don't, I, from one, I do it for myself. Right. If I go to the supermarket and I stock the fridge, it's for, then how much more if I'm married? So I don't, mm. I don't know about the women who write food list. Like, and nobody's judging. I mean, what works in your home works in your home. True. If it works for you, great. I mean, I'm not that not person. Have genuinely, yeah, that's I'm not okay. that person who would be like, Ah, month end, baby, this is mm -hmm. house upkeep. I, that's not me. Do you get? Mm -hmm. I would expect that some heavy lifting in the house. Like, I don't want to know what's going on with the generator. It's not my... Uh, no, if it's... Do, I, I should not lie. Where they used to do changeover in our house, I don't know. It's... Do you get things like that? Do you, I feel good. like... So what you can then do to reward the man, as you said, and mm -hmm. I admire that. Maybe I should try that as well in terms of, you know mm -hmm. what, rather than not saying, me, I'm just a different kind of weary. Mm -hmm. My only thought would be, ah, <laughs> if you go back, I should pack. Where, I where are they packing to? So where? I don't understand. How? I, I, in, my, in my house. Do you get? I, the, well, maybe because me, me, I, have, I have that thing traumatizing. Like, oh, no, no, no. It's, I, I, I tell me, get out of my house. Because how? we all know the things we've dealt with. Mm -hmm. I also, sometimes when people look at me and say, oh, you're excessive. You buy one thing in, in six colors. You buy... I've never admitted this, but I've admitted it on my podcast. I've always had the feel of not having because the only security I knew left when I was eight. Mm. Losing both parents on the same day does something to you mm -hmm. mentally. So I have a hoarder's mentality. So I find myself sometimes buying more than I need. Not necessarily because I want to splurge or is, it, is, is me trying to show off. Mm. It's actually a trauma response. It's mm -hmm. from, you know, I used to steal virus at some point. I used, I used to just randomly steal virus. Because I just always had the trauma of being where I needed to feel something and I won't have a pen. Mm. So you open my bag and you see like 10 pens. Like, why do you have 10 pens? Mm -hmm. I just keep picking them up from the bank, from this, from that, from that. I won't return people's barrier to them. So it's a trauma response that can also come from you never wanting to depend on somebody. Mm -hmm. So you're like, you know what? I don't care how much money you have. I'm going to pay that, half that rent with you. So that, mm. as you're saying, 
Tabanja, stay on this wing. Mm-hmm. Let me stay on this wing. So I miss. I said, if I want to cost you out, I can cost you out very well. Mm-hmm. You know, but is is I I admire that. Do you know what I mean? Like I look at you and and as woman to woman, I I, I really really admire that. I think. Oh, yeah. But I remember speaking to you when you were pregnant. Mm-hmm. I, this is why one of the reasons why I I always say you know we we'll talk via DM and I, I always like let you know how proud I am of you at, at every point. Is you just find a way of even the things you're not expecting, you make it work. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because a lot of people at that point might have been afraid that. My career is literally at a point where, you know, the emergence of Kiki is everywhere. Mm. Going on a nine months sabbatical might not be mm. like a great idea. Mm-hmm. How did you get rid of the fear of, you know what, well, fuck that. This is what I'm doing right now and I'm going to just do it. So one of the things that I live by is that I don't bother over things that I can't change. Okay. And it's 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 so beautiful. Sometimes people that work with me, there was a day my daughter was asking me that, hey, do you want to question? Can she... In cooking, worrying me. See, the way I rely on Christ is funny, but it works really all the time. My favorite hymn is What a Friend We Have in Jesus, verse 3. It says, Oh, what needless pain we bear because we fail to carry to God in prayer. What has happened has happened. The only person that can turn it around is Jesus. If you don't allow him, it will not turn. If you allow him, it will turn. Now, whether you allow him or you do not allow him, you cannot turn it yourself. So why stress? <laughs> that is how I live my life. Mm. Sometimes I find that mindset easy to live by. Sometimes I find it difficult to mm. live by. But that was something that my parents also gave to me. No matter the sad news you want to tell my dad in this life, that you want to give him bad news, boom, and then you're starting to say, what or panic? Perhaps you just tell you, let the will of the Lord be done. And I say, or oh, we record him most so he. And then I'm telling you, where the angel of my vehicle he knock. But she said, the will of God. Mr. Williams, and then I'm telling you that, Caesar. Mm-hmm. But that is not. So when I meet myself in places that I do not like or I least expect, mm. do you know what I started doing the day I found out that I was pregnant? The next day was when I wrote my first sitcom, Taylor on sitcom. And that Taylor on sitcom, she had FIRS. When I came with you, were you pregnant? Yes, no. That you slap that I hit my head on the, on the table bar. I think I was like four months pregnant. Ah, hey, all of you. Have you watched Jazz Kids? I went to measure her. That's how she gave me slap B. We actually slapped her real, real 360. time. 360. Like, I just knocked my head I, on I, didn't, I didn't know it was going to be that hard because I am a met like when I, I like to. The thing with acting for me is you know how this work is. Like, mm-hmm. I don't. You know, I got into character and I forgot that it was kids. Very and next thing I had actually did boom on set. <laughs> and I was so afraid. You were pregnant. Yeah, I was, I was, I was about four months at the time. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I was. You slapped a pregnant woman. I feel so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but then again, you know, I started writing skits and then I shot about um that sitcom was six episodes. Mm. And then I shot other skits, about 10 of them. And then luckily at the time was when, at, the, at that time was when um, one expert renewed my contract. And I dare not tell them that I'm pregnant because it's sweet money. So I shot six. Yeah, but why do we always have to do that in this industry? Don't you find that frustrating how, as men, I just said it to you now, mm. a man would marry next thing, his wife gave Boom. birth. You almost even find the brands almost celebrating when he tells you, Pay me this amount of money. Mm-hmm. You find people on that team, negotiation team, saying, "Ah, you know, he just married, he just bought a house, ah, he needs the money." Mm-hmm. When it comes to women, why do we have to hide? Because it's not musicians who hide. Mm-hmm. Everybody because they feel like their phones stop ringing the moment people know that they're pregnant. I don't know. I, I honestly do not know. I do not know. But you know, the, the the beautiful thing with me also is God gave me a lot of strength. Oh, I had a lot of strength. I had that morning sickness, month. In fact, I started falling ill from the next morning. That is, is mental. Nobody really? can tell me shit. I was fine and good and great. I got the result today. And by the next morning, I started vomiting. The very next morning, I started salivating. I was even struggling with it. I'm falling big. Game. My mom was teasing me that you still carry can. This is vomiting. This is salivating that you're salivating. If someone should tell me that I'll be going around with can, I'll say it's a lie. I remember when you told me about peeing self because we used to talk then uh, and you'd be like, I, I, at least I'd not pee in a day. At least I'll pee like 30 times. You know, you'll pee so much that you don't even wear pants for what? To do what? But because of, and then, you know, the way the pee used to come, mm. you do not, you know, if you want to pee, you get, you get, you get like a one minute, two minute heads up. 
this one is like five seconds heads up. If you, you don't get there on time. Do you remember bro. when you were looking for your phone one time and you found this in the fridge? <laughs> do you remember you told me in the DM? Or when one night we were talking and you had com- you had you had found a comfortable spot finally. Yes. And then you now then had to the you just said come. that you might be on the bed. No, no, let, not, let us lie. Pregnant woman. We, we know, ah, pregnant. We know sometimes we used to wear pad because before you make it to the toilet, the urine will come. You know, you, you will sneeze and you will pee. Ah. Oh. Pregnancy. Pregnancy is not your mate too. Pregnancy is not anybody's mate in this Why life. Why do you look good till the end? I didn't really see any pictures of you pregnant. I think I took that after my mom. Because my mom said to me that she was like that. So, my nose is pretty small. Mm-hmm. So, when the nose started getting bigger, it was not showing. So, it didn't let for good to me. I didn't get darker. I didn't really have... Because right, right now, I weigh 62. Mm-hmm. I didn't really have weight. Mm-hmm. But my baby was so big. But she really stressed my hair strike marks on my, on my um, sides. And that was about it. Just like my younger sister, she was just all belly. Mm. No, just all belly. Her arms were skinny. Everything was like... When I, I went for my so checkup, scared. my doctor was teasing me that, so not even two, not even two kg. Not even three, okay, three kg. Every, every dance that she just born. So you didn't add any weight? I didn't add any nonsense. Before I had no like I was 64. Now I'm 62. I don't even know what's going on. Because at my age now, I'm with my career. Am I supposed to be weighing below 65? <laughs> It's not no, good. But also, you're very active. Ah. So that might be because you're always doing stuff. Like yes. you can't sit down. You're always yes. either you're dancing mm-hmm. or you know you're creating content, move, shooting movies. Mm-hmm. You know, come and you 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 are always on the move. Yeah. And a healthy lifestyle like that, obviously, you know. Do you do you go to the G workout? No, I have a treadmill in my house. I try to get on it about forty five minutes an hour every day. So I, mean, I do like four days a week or so. Then sometimes somebody will now remind me that he made I made him ship it from America to. Nigeria, that she's going to climb this, then I'll not go and climb it. <laughs> but him that is reminding me, didn't climb it too. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you get it right? Like, man, like if someone's watching... Get it right. right no, I'm it's still learning. Like, no. no, I know. But then it's, it seems like you married the right person because your career did not change when you got married. It no, even it, got better. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Which doesn't really happen that happen, way. Yeah. yeah. You find out, I, I told you, I know someone, top of her game, when she married... This nigga, she would get home at 11, 30, 12 because mm. of work. And this guy would tell her he doesn't eat food that has been one day late. Wonderful. Meaning that she has to enter the kitchen. Wonderful. I'm not kidding. And even his mom <laughs> would back him up and say things like, ah, this moi moi you cooked is not really good. I'll teach you how to do moi moi. Wonderful. And she had to worry about client deadline. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. She, didn't, she couldn't leave the house before he left the house because... He was very into, I don't want strangers in our home. So she was a cleaner. Mm-hmm. She was the chef. She was the wife. She was the caterer. She was the best friend. She was the accountant. All of that. And still wearing the cap of her own business. Wonderful. So, I mean, tell me how that person's business would not crash. It's not possible. When she herself, she's already crashing. <laughs> with doing all of that. She's already... Well, you know, so for me, I also believe that... Because I have female friends and I see some kind of patterns and I'm telling them, listen... All these things that you are doing, there are things that are not realistic in marriage. Don't mm. let this guy feel like you can do it. Before we, I got married, I never washed my husband's clothes. I never washed plates in his house. Mm. I never sweep the ground. <laughs> the I'm not grand. a domestic person. Uh, do you cook? I know how to cook. But the last time I cooked from the day I'm sitting on this green couch now, maybe like six or seven months, since I have had no lab, no cooked. And she's already eight months. And I traveled about three months before I born out. This thing we are talking about, going to one year now, I have no mm. cook. Mm. The Bible has said it, that man shall not live by bread alone. So you cannot marry me and think that by cooking is how the marriage will excel. <laughs> I, no, that's not it. I'll be, I, can, I will fast for you. <laughs> She said fast. Yes, I will we, we pray fast for together, you. Have that. No, it, no. I mean, if, if you not your cook partner. or you cannot order for food, I'm a fast. No, no. What I mean is that I can't cook for you, but in other aspects, okay, I'm there for you spiritually. Mm. I am there for you. Mm. I will fast for you. I will pray for you. Mm. When it comes to business, you, you, you know that when I have when there are opportunities, I will support you physically, mentally, spiritually, financially. I will support you. Okay, I know I supported her financially before. She had to be more like oh, oh. now I'm moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Mother like to wear a lot of native. All my own clothes are like handkerchief. They are very light. Mm-hmm. And I still don't use my hand to wash it. There's mm-hmm. washing machine. So when you are dating a guy, you are cutting a guy, only he's going there to be cooking. Not because you enjoy cooking, no. Mm-hmm. If you enjoy cooking, 
beautiful. Mm. I have a friend who is very famous and she's in a relationship and she cooks a lot because if she has two, three or four days that she's not working, she's spending that time cooking. Even before she started dating this guy, we used to call, have you, have you done new or father sauce? Have you made new vegetables? Let us come to your house and eat. So mm. now that she's dating, this it's guy is... normal. Yeah. So if that's who you are, it's beautiful. But you see, women do all these things in relationship. The guy will now marry you, finish with certain expectations. We're telling, we're telling somebody that, babe, I had to, I, I had to tell the client to go because I, because I have to come and cook for my baby. He's still romantic now mm. because they are dating. When that now becomes a demand, then it becomes a problem. Yeah, but isn't let's also be fair. I mm-hmm. hear you on that women and certain expectations. I also feel like a lot of women don't mean to do those things, just as you said now. Mm-hmm. Like now, if I feel like, oh, I want to do something nice, some men also interpret that to expectations as well. Do you know what I mean? So, and as much as we're like, yeah, set, start how you want to finish, as I'm mm-hmm. doing my own thing. But, you know, it's not bad for you to say, okay, my clients, I'm coming to cook for you. But there's some certain men who also make it mandatary. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. Who now start to say things like, ah, my wife, you know, my ex. Like now, this is one of the red flags I tell people about. The way a nigger talks about his ex mm-hmm. when he's trying to talk to me. Mm-hmm. I don't want to know how your ex used to make you food. I don't want to know how your ex used to cut your nails. Mm-hmm. I don't want to know how your ex used to lay your bed. <laughs> oh, that thing. That, oh, my ex. Oh, no, 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 you know no, what I mean? Like, then yeah. be, date her. Like, yeah, be there. Do, me, I'll ask the guy, do you want me to call her to lay the bed? Because mm-hmm. all this one you're saying, I don't understand. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm trying mm-hmm. to say? So I feel like sometimes, in as much as we want to tell women, um, you know, the, start how you want to finish and the expectations, which I, I agree with you 100%. This thing called marriage, my sister, let's be honest, she lo, you know, there's no one way to it actually. People are very pressured into thinking, ah, if I do this, if I do that, just maybe mm. it would work out. Mm-hmm. And sometimes they get it wrong. Do you know what I mean? But True. I also feel like fundamentally, you know, there's some men who are very, very, you very know, this well this whole thing too is like, it's, it's, it's two ways. Though. It's the same way because this guy is coming to you where every other day is coming. You guys have a date, he's showing up with a flower or with a gift. You think that every day when he's coming home from work or every time he travels, he's going to come with something special for you. So, you know, people are delusional mm. when it comes to relationship and sometimes expectations are just out of the box. There's no one way to marry. My, the fundamentals of my marriage is different from that of my parents and theirs is working as well. And yeah. there are some things that my mother will do and my father will do that. I know that if I do it in my own system oh, since yeah, we castigated yeah, yeah. but at the end of the day it's just about knowing the person that you are with and having that person's best interest at heart yeah. my husband's parents is siblings fantastic and, and so that's why i say that the way he's working for me is beautiful mm-hmm. and that's another god factor yeah a very major god, god factor. factor yeah because before i got married it was something that i dedicated days to I dedicated like a certain amount of days to say I am going to pray about this and I need I told God I'm not a pastor I'm not a prophet give me a sign that I will understand don't do like this with me and I was still telling someone yesterday that God is so beautiful that I can't even pray about your nails it is us that we think that some things are big some things are small yeah you know you so God, I used to praise God sometime when I'm going out there this I want to it's so wrong. I can't even say it. You know when you're going out with your girls and you're like, Lord, as we're going out, it's only ballers. <laughs> And he used to answer. Yeah, we all realized that we didn't, nanny, we didn't pay no bills. Like, God, I think like, ah! we're like, shout out to Biola. We legit used to say those prayers. Because mm-hmm. this is my, my cousin Biola. I've never seen anybody like her. Just, when you're talking, you remind me of Biola. Uh, Biola is the kind of person that talks to God about the most randomness. Yeah. Her relationship with God actually fascinates me. Mm-hmm. Biola would write prayer points to Mountain of Fire, like power must change hands that we do every Saturday. Mm-hmm. In the prayer points, she would talk about how she wants to go to this particular restaurant, how she wants to go to a private club in London, how she wants to meet somebody that... And it used to work out. <laughs> like, she'd be like, ah, you don't know I prayed. I just want to... Ah, took it, I prayed. I'm like... You prayed to God about Shakti. About what again? <laughs> Are you serious? And she's like, if you like, don't pray about me, I pray about my own. So just hearing you say that, I guess I need to, and God have been going Yeah, through. you know, God, Yeah, no matter how old you are, you're like, sometimes I see me like my baby and God like my parents. Mm-hmm. No matter how silly it is, oh, she, Nola wants milk, oh, she wants water, oh, she wants to change her outfit, she doesn't like the headband. It's like that. It's, you know, there's actually nothing you can pray about, mm. and God would actually listen to you. It's mm. just you know, I know that's like another. Well, this is not a Christian uh, program. But no, but no, no, it's fine. Like I feel like it's it's a lot of people in this industry. I'm happy with what God is doing in this generation mm-hmm. and the awareness of you know because. 
people have other things they bow down to. So mm-hmm. if you know how to do jazz, do it well. Mm-hmm. If you know how to worship the devil, worship him well. And if God is all you have, you better worship the Lord you very better. well because you know you can't just be lukewarm. As no, no, you can't be. Do you understand? You can't afford to be. If you you know if you want to do this, do it well. If you want to bear ball, bear ball very well. If not, you know then <laughs> if you know it's not your power, who could get on your knees and pray? Mm-hmm. Now? Do you understand? So that God mm-hmm. will finally hear you. So it's it's not about it not being a, a Christian program. It's literally the things that have kept you as who you are. Yeah, because and I mean at, at the end of the day, it's just um a thing of saying I want this. And this is what I want. Even when I was having, I was going to have my child, I literally wrote it down. I don't want her to have my tits. I want her to have hair. I want her brows to be fine. I want her to have her daddy's. Because my husband has Jericho. I want her to have him. I want her to be chubby, but not too fat. I want her to take my skin, but but not have skin tags like her daddy. Like, literally, like, point, tiny, tiny. So my mom said, I was really new one day. My mom said, ah, I want to I said, no, these are prayer points for Nola. The things I want for her. And she looked at me like this. She, <laughs> and he, he literally came through for you. And when I born my child, oh, have you seen Ola recent? She's like gelato. Gelato. She's so pretty. So, in fact, go, I'm waiting for her to claw her tattoo. I want to go and chop most beautiful gay Nigeria for her. Oh, That's and so she's amazing. so tall. Like, she's going to be a superstar. <laughs> She'll be doing an interview on Red Carpet GQ and then L. She'll be saying, 